Yangwe from the bar native. It's a award-winning sustainability-focused bar. Yangwe started his bartending car years after he graduated from university in 2017. He started as a junior bartender at Poland, Singapore, and Yangwe joined Native, then a newly launched bar. Native focuses on a local and regional craft, produce, and flavors with forward-thinking techniques. These attributes intrigue Yangwe to be a part of the team as it challenged the usual norms in bartending, using the nostalgic flavor combinations that had not been done. Yangwe also traveled around the world, representative, representing Native in Greece, India, UK, Australia, Taiwan, and more. As a guest bartender in this country, Yangwe learned about different cultures, flavor, techniques in different parts of the world, and it helps Yangwe in redefining his bartending skills, picking up new techniques, and enhance his creative ability. ability. Yangwe is proud to be part of the native bar that has consistently been part of the world's 50 best and Asian bar list the last past three years. Thank you very much, Yangwe, to be with us. The floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, my test. All right, guys. Good evening. How are you guys? Tired. Tired. Okay. All right. No worry. Cool. And same goes to the guys in the other room and also um, it's still overseas. All right. Thanks for coming. So my name is Yong Wei. So today uh, I'm going to share a bit more to you like what we are, um, what we do, who we are, and where we are. So basically, I'm uh, coming from this bar called Native. So Native is actually a bar that's located in Amoy Street in an old shop house, and we are on the second floor. And this is how the bars look like. Yep. So we have like a bar top, and it's actually shaped in like a ship. And then at the, um, at the back is all the bottles and all the regional spirit. So um, if you compare us to a, your usual cocktail bar, I will say we are a little bit more different. So what we do is we actually work with local and also regional craftsmen and produce. So what we mean by that is um, from, the, from the point that you step into the bar, you can see like the music, the listenings, and also the table chairs, all the furniture, and also like the spirit that we use and the ideas and also flavors that we create for the cocktail. So it's all inspired by local and regional peoples, culture and language. So let's talk about like our name. So this is actually our logo. So the word N-T-I-V-E. So it's actually inspired by uh, Singapore stone. So it's actually uh, this huge sandstone that's actually engraved with all the indigenous language and it's dated back to like 13th or 14th century. And the word A this is actually an international glyph. So what it means is actually, uh, it means explore. So the whole idea for the logo is actually, we are, we are a small bar, we are a local bar in Singapore, but we still want to try to connect to like um, internationally, globally. So that's how we come about. So when we say uh, we are local and regional, so it actually means down to like our spirit that we use so when you come to the bar, you don't really find like your usual um, bourbon or maybe like um, the tequila that's normally found in Mexico, uh, come from Mexico. But what we do have is like we got a huge range of like different spirit that's come from um, the regional. So it's like the country that's around us. So I'll share a bit more to you what we have in the bar for now. So the first one, we got something called Paul John. So this is actually a uh, whiskey. It's a modern distillery that comes from this uh, little part in India. It's called Goa. So Goa is actually near to the coastal area. So imagine that if you are like a weird fan of whiskey, it's, it's closer to what like a space-sized whiskey. It's got like this briny uh, flavors. It's because of the sea breeze. Then moving on, we have another one. It's called Oma. So it's also a whiskey, but this time it's actually come from Taiwan. So when we talk about Taiwan whiskeys, uh, a lot of people just know that's like Kavalan, and Kavalan is well known. 
but we still like to explore like different boutique uh, distilleries and we come, uh, come across this, it's called Oma. So it's actually in this uh, little Taiwan and then it's actually in the center part, which the only regions uh, that never touch in the sea is quite interesting. Yeah, it's called Nantou. Then they got like a few different variations. Then the next we got is something uh, actually made in Singapore. So we have this, the distillery name is called Compendium. So they actually do gin, rum, and even down to like liqueur. So it's quite interesting. And then they even make from like, like honey or maybe coconut. So it's not like your usual like malted barley or junipers. So it's quite interesting. And then we have Amrut. So Amrut, this is actually, the word itself is a Sanskrit word, which means water of life. It's also come from India, but it's another part of India, it's called Bangalore. And then the interesting part is they actually use like a six row barley instead of like a normal two row barley. So what that means is when two, uh, six row barley is normally high in starch content. So when the starch breaks down the sugars, it ferments. So it get, actually gives the, uh, it's more like uh, more characteristic to your final whiskey. And then we also have a uh, hapusha. So the word itself also a Sanskrit word, but this one, this time, is actually stand for juniper. Then this is come from like Himalayan, like, and then we also have a brass lion, also another Singapore distillery. So this guy, they do like three different style. Uh, the, this is their classic. So it's called, uh, it's actually Singapore dry. So inside is 22 different kind of botanicals, which they mainly focus on like Southeast Asia. So there's like chrysanthemum flowers, uh, there's hortons, there's rosel, and then we got samai. So this is actually a rum. I'm not sure if any fan of rum over here. So this is actually a spice rum. So when you talk about spice rum, usually you can find like different spice. So there's like a bit of like cinnamon, a bit of uh, pepper. But for this, it's actually just one single spice. So it's actually used the spices come from this uh, specific regions. It's called Kampot in Cambodia. And then they actually ferment and distill. And then we have like Tanglin. And then this is a uh, first Singapore distillery. And the interesting part is actually they label themselves as an orchid gin. And orchid is actually like a Singapore national flower. So they use like two different parts of orchid. One is vanilla pot, and the other one is actually a root part of the orchid. It's called dendrobium. So back in the days, people actually use it for like Chinese medicine, and it's like super pricey. And the last one, we have a rum that's come from uh, this is Phuket. It's called Chalong Bay. So this one is a bit different as compared to like a normal rum because instead of using molasses, this guy actually they use a first press fresh sugar cane juice. So it's actually another style. It's called uh, Agrico. So this one definitely is uh, one of my favorite. It's a bit more grassy, more subtle. And the next, like, so the bar now is actually like four years old. But if you think about it, like four years ago, before Native Open, there's actually none of a distillery. But now, we came a long way. There's a lot of different distilleries in the world. Uh, in, and then now we have Singapore Distillery as well. So for this, uh, we have like in total five distillery in Singapore now. And then this is one of them that we're working with. So we have a compendium. So compendium is actually when they started, it's actually started as a midori. So when we say midori, it mean, I mean winery, which means they do wine. But midori is actually they do meat. So meat is actually a honey wine. So it's actually alcoholic beverages that's fermented uh, honey. And then this guy, they slowly to explore. They started slow, uh, that started small, but then now they're actually uh, growing quite well. So they do a lot of different stuff. So the first one, this one, is actually Rojak Gin. It's actually made from honey. So normally when you talk about like gin, uh, it's made from neutral grain spirit and it can make from like sweet potatoes, um, a lot of grains. But this guy, they actually choose to use honey. So when they ferment the honey into meat, what they do, they actually distill it. And then they actually distill with some local flavors. It's like ginger flower, there's like lemon peel. And then the second one is chendo. So chendo is actually a local dessert. Yeah. So it's, and then the inside is actually using a coconut and there's a bit of pandan. Pandan is like an aromatic herbs. There's this like vanilla coconut kind of flavors. 
and then they also do rum. So actually, there's one rum in Singapore right now. So far, it's the one and only. And then they actually, what they do, they get the molasses from the neighboring country, Malaysia. Yeah, it's actually super close. So they ferment it and then they distill. And then they even down to like, they do some liqueurs with like some local flavors, some like coffee and also like teo. Okay, and next we got is, uh, let's show you some of the cocktail that we serve in the bar. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring the cocktail over, but uh, don't worry, I have a little prop over here, which I will pass around later on. Then you guys can take a look what the ingredients goes inside. And then you guys can touch, can smell, go ahead. So this cocktail uh, is actually called Peranakan. So Peranakan, the word itself, is actually referred to a local ethnic group, which is a combination of like uh, different ethnic groups. So that can be like uh, Malay, that can be Chinese, that can be Indians. And then the drinks itself is actually inspired by one of the dessert, a traditional dessert. It's called Kue Salad. So Kue in Malay means uh, dessert, and then salad means smooth. So the drinks is inspired from there, and this is our modern take on it. So in the drinks itself, we also use like a lot of uh, local ingredients. Okay, I'll pass around. You guys can uh, start. Yeah. There we go. So it's a rum-based cocktail, but then uh, inside we have this green stuff. It's actually a pandan. So this is the one that I was talking earlier. That's like this vanilla, coconut kind of flavors, and then we also infuse with a bit of a uh, gula melaka. So gula melaka is actually, it's a palm sugar. And then this is actually made from coconut. They do like a reduction, caramelize it. And then we also have like a jackfruit. So jackfruit is actually a tropical fruits that usually it can grow up to like 50 kg. It's a huge fruit. And it got like this very fleshy, meaty, uh, very pungent kind of uh, aroma. And then we have this called candle nut. Uh, so candle nut, for some of the guess they look, actually thought like, it looked a bit like a macadamia. So, but it's actually not, it's a bit different. So for the candle nut, normally what people do, they actually, uh, they use it as a thickening agent. So when they make like sauce, they will just like blend it in, sort of thickening the sauce. Then we have uh, blue pea flower. So this is actually a very useful color, uh, flower. And usually you can find it in a lot of like Pranakan cuisine. They use it for like a natural dye and all that. And then, well, this cocktail, interesting part also, we actually add a bit of goat's milk. They actually come from Singapore. It's actually up north on the Singapore. Then the name is called Hey Dairies. But the drinks itself is clear. So what we do is actually, uh, there's some interesting thing over here, is the jackfruit. That's the enzyme in the jackfruit. It actually helps to uh, curdle. There's a slight bit of this enzyme. It helps to curdle the milk. And what we do, it just strain over the cloth. So like the liquid, the way they flow it down, it becomes the cocktail, while the remaining curds. So what we do, instead of throwing them away, we actually uh, boil it down, cook it down with a bit of like coconut, a bit of pandan, and a bit of uh, blue pea flour, we do the jelly. So this is our style on the kueh salad. So kueh salad usually is a layer dessert. It's made from glutinous rice and coconut. Okay, and on top, we actually have the seed from a jackfruit. So nothing goes to waste in native. We always believe like uh, something that we can use, we always can give it like second life instead of like straight away through into the bean. So the seed, what we do, we actually boil it down and we just shave it on top. It actually gets you this like slight bit of a nuttiness. Let's go to the next. We've got another cocktail. So when we do the cocktail, it's always based off like different ideas, localities, um, traditions. And for this, it's actually we call pineapple rock. So it's actually one of the best sellers in the bar. So for this cocktail, it's inspired by the spirit itself. So we have this spirit, it's actually come from Sri Lanka. So Ceylon, the word Ceylon is actually the old name for Sri Lanka. So for this, Ara is very, very interesting. So instead of like your usual rum, whiskey, this guy is Ara and they are by them own. So it's not made from, um, it's actually made from the coconut flour sap. So they're being ferment and distilled then they age in like a Sri Lankan wood for a couple of years. And the drinks itself, since the spirit is made from coconut flower sap and it's come from Sri Lanka. So we use a lot of like spices. So there's like cinnamon, there's black pepper, clove, cardamom. Just get a bit more complexity for the drinks. 
And also, we have a bit of uh, pineapple skin. So a lot of people thought like the skin is kind of waste. So what we do is we actually infuse the skin with the spirit. So it still get a bit of like the sweet and sourness from the fruit, while the remaining flesh, what we do is we actually bake it down with some cinnamon. And then we put it back to the freezers, so we serve it as a nibble, like a snack. So for the drinks, it's using the entire coconut and also the entire pineapple. The next, we got one of uh, a bit more exotic, uh, a bit more interesting, like experimental cocktail. This one we actually call it oyster omelette. So oyster omelette, have you tried before? Yes, uh, beautiful. Cool. So for the oyster omelette, this is actually inspired by a hawker dishes. So some of you might not know. So like oyster omelette, commonly you can find in like a hawker center, and usually it's just like two components: oysters and egg. So we take the inspiration from there. So the oysters, we actually turn into a distillate, which is like a flavor alcohol. So they are not gin, they are not rum. They are just like a alcohol with oyster flavors. You can imagine that. And then for the egg, what we do is we turn into a savory foam. So we actually age the egg in like a soy sauce, uh, sorry, miso sauce. So we age the egg yolk into the miso for a couple of days. Then we turn into a foam, so you get like that saviness, umami flavors. And then on top, we have some microgreens. So this all is actually we grow from, uh, growing in the bar. And it's actually made, uh, growing on top of the compost that we do our own. Okay. And the cup is actually done by a local ceramic maker. So this one is actually made from the oyster shell. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, nothing goes to waste. So like the shell from the oysters, instead of then chuck them to the bin, so what we do is we actually work with like some local ceramic artists. So they are blended into powder and then coated on top of the coated outside of the ceramic cups. The last cocktail we have is a concrete jungle. So this is basically inspired by like Singapore itself, and we try to showcase some of the fresh ingredients. So we have the first one. This one is called ginger flower. So there's another name for it. It's called rojak flower. I'm not. Is anyone tried rojak before? Okay, so basically roja is, is a Malay word, which means mixture. It's like a mixed fruit salad in Singapore. And then at the end, normally people will straight this flower on top. Yeah, so then we use this as a base, and then there's a bit of like nutmeg, nutmeg leaf, and also we have some spring water, which we get from Singapore. Well, this one is actually a pepper leaf. It's a wild pepper leaf. So we actually uh, just forage it, and then we fry it and we dust it with a bit of bee pollen and also termulawa powder. Termulawa is actually referred to a Javanese ginger. It almost tastes like a turmeric, but it's much more herbaceous, medicinal. Yep. And then we also, so as a native, we also work with like different communities and farmers is one of them. So we work with a lot of different farms. There's edible garden cities. And for this, we'll be uh, green Circle, so it's a local farm. And then these are the herbs and the vegetables that we get from them. Okay, so there are quite a few of them. Anyone want to make a guess? Uh, anyone can list me at least three items? Yep, and then you'll get a free drinks on me when you're in the bar. <laughs> I mean, I didn't bring any, but then you can come to the bar. Okay, cool. We got someone over there. Yes, gingers, correct. But there's a lot of different types of gingers. Oh. <laughs> yes, in Singapore, we got almost 54 different species of gingers. Oh, then I, I lost then. <laughs> okay, so this is gingers, correct. Uh, this is actually young gingers. Okay, there's okay. young gingers, there's old gingers. So young gingers is normally more aromatic, but less spicy. But if you go for old gingers, normally it's a bit more spicy. They're, they're useful, uh, good for dessert, I would say. Okay, it's a good try. Just now I see someone else. Okay. Which one? Uh, the purple leaf on the, on the center. On the center, this one? Yes. This one? No, uh, the purple one. This one? I think it's basil. Oh, no, it's not basil. So it's something called coleus. Okay, good try, good try. Okay. So here on the, on the left, you have okra or gombo. Okra. Yeah. Yes, exactly, correct. Then you have like curcuma on top. Coconut? No, curcuma. 
curcuma. Which one? And the uh, orange one. The orange one, this yeah, one? Yeah. What do you call it? Curcuma or curcuma or... Turmeric, yes, yeah. it's called turmeric. Oh, yeah, so it's like a, a, another name, you can call it like a yellow ginger. It's a bit more common. Okay. Yes, exactly. Correct. And then you have like the, the peppers on the right. Which one? Like this one's on, like on the right, uh, in down, the middle. Down down, down. 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 This one? Yeah, yeah. Chili peppers, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It yeah. looks so like a food. chili and it is a chili. <laughs> yeah. So free drinks then. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, later you just get me, uh, I'll just get a name and then I'll get, it. I'll get something when you're in the bar. Let me know. All right, cool. Yeah, so these are all the things that we can find in Singapore actually. Yeah. And then we have like this called Belimbing's. Uh, it's actually a starfruit family. So normally uh, people use, because it's due to a high acidic level, so it used to balance out the sweetness or like the spiciness from the dishes. Ginger flower as mentioned, ladies fingers, also name of uh, okra. And then we also have like blue pea flowers. This is commonly used for natural dye. So yeah, that, that's about it. And next, so in native, we also um, focus on a lot of like techniques and also fermentation is actually part of it. So in the bar itself, we actually don't use any common citrus. So I believe like a lot of you have been to a lot of different bar before, but when you go through the menu, there's always like lemon juice, lime juice, but there's none in the bar. So it's not that we don't like them. It's just like um, in a busy Friday night, easily you can churn it off, ton of lemon juice, lime juice, but what to do with the shells is kind of waste it's going to the bean, right? Even though you use it for garnish, but how much can you use? So for us, we always try to explore like different acid. So through fermentation is actually one of them. So when you do a ferment, you can actually uh, get like acetic acid, which normally you'll find in vinegar. Or maybe you can go through a lacto fermentation, it creates like lactic acid. So lacto fermentation is actually a fermentation by using a salt. And lactic acid is normally you find in lactose, like dairy. So this is all the ferment that we do in the bar. And we do have like R&D team come in the daytime to do all the ferments. And then we also have a distillate. So we also do a lot of like distillation in the bar. So we have like a small machine to do all this mise en place, this experiment. So this is a distillate. So it's still like a flavor alcohol. So just now when we mentioned about the oysters, it's oyster distillate. And then for now we have mosambis, it's lime. Then we also have like another different kind of lime, it's key lime. And this is the machine that I'm talking about. So we are small, but we always try to invest in like different things. And this is one of the fancy equipment that we use in the bar. So it's called Rotary Evaporator. So what it does is actually help us to use um, alcohol to extract flavors. So what it does is over here, there's this receiving bulb. So we can put like alcohol or any of liquid you want, a rum, whiskey, neutral grain spirit, and then you can put any of the ingredients, any of the raw materials. And throughout the evaporation, the water vapor will carry all the flavor compounds. And then throughout like the condensation at the back, it come out exactly like a clear liquid, but with the particular flavors, the essence, the aroma. Yeah. You'll see a lot in the chemist, chemistry lab. And then the one on the side, this is a centrifuge. So this is mainly for like a lot of clarification. So the equipment itself, it will spin in like high speed. So when you say high speed, it's almost like 4,000 per minute. So what it does is the gravity force will pull the sediment outwards. So because like the sediment is usually more heavier and the remaining liquid, it will stay clear. And also in native, um, we also apply this thing called responsible bartending. So what we mean by that is uh, as a bar, we try to be a bit more uh, eco-friendly to the environment. So we do some of the things in the bar. So this is something called bokashi. So it's actually every night in the bar, all the waste, all the food scrap, all the organic waste, instead of throwing down to the bin. So what we do is actually we compose it. So we actually gather it and then we compose it for almost like four to six months. And eventually it will become like a natural fertilizer which we can grow like some plants, some herbs, some microgreens. And this is those the concentrated liquids from the composting. So what you can do is actually, it's super concentrated. So you can just like uh, dilute it with water 
and it's actually good for cleaning like all the drains, toilets, or kitchenware. And then we also have a coaster. So when you are in the bar, the coaster that we use is not like a normal paper coaster. So what we use is actually a leaf coaster. And all this leaf is actually a lotus leaf. So the reason that we use it is actually, uh, first thing, they are much more water resistant. And the second thing is actually, if you compare to a normal paper coaster, these guys, even they're wet, the next day, uh, we, the end of the night, we just dry it and we just uh, flatten it. And the next day we can reuse again. And even it's like super torn because there's still leaf. After a while, it's still like decomposed. Outside the, outside the bar, actually, we have a mirror. So we actually stick it on the wall like a 3D art. So there's nothing goes to waste. And then we don't use like plastic straw. It's like a metal straw. Uh, and this is our aprons. And even our aprons is actually done by a local tailor. And all this color from the aprons is actually from a natural dye. So the blue color is come from the blue pea flowers, and then for so like the yellow color from my, it's actually come from turmeric. So it's all from the natural dye. And also we have a rooftop garden now. So like in last year, we actually started our rooftop garden. We have an urban rooftop garden. It's just like 10 minutes walk from the bar. So what we do is we use our compost after six months, become a natural fertilizer. Then we actually tend to grow some herbs, some plants, and eventually, we're back to the bar. So if you think about it, it's almost like a cycle. We start from the drinks, then the ingredients, the waste, you turn into compost. The compost grow into the, uh, the, the leaf, the vegetables, the garnish, then back to the cocktail. So this one on my left will be the turmeric leaf. So a lot of people seen turmeric before, but never seen the leaf before. So this is actually a turmeric leaf. And then we have sawtooth corandas, and this is a curry leaf that will grow. So, yep. And the next, we also grow like different variety of uh, chilies. So there's like purple chilies. And then this is actually a small lime. It's not uh, really like, it's not really a lime. It's called calamansi. So it's a small lime that's uh, grow out well inside Southeast Asia. Okay. okay. And then we also, end of the night, we always like try to, we always weigh out our trash, so we don't just like throw down to the bin, okay? So end of the night, we'll do the recycling for the bottles, and then for the organic waste, we'll do it into compost. But still, I mean, we also have like some of the guests that come in with their own trash, like a tissue paper or like plastic bag, which can't be recycled or can't be reused or compost. So that will become the waste, and we have like a very, very low waste at every night. So this will be the average. And then if you think about it, even for your iPhone now, the weight is about 152. And then we can maintain our waste in daily basis is below 100 gram. And then we also have our own like uh, waste management. So what it, what it does is actually help us to list it out. So we can find out by this 38 grams, how many come from tissue, how many come from plastic. Then from there, we'll move on like how we can sort of like reduce the waste. This is always our end goals. We always want to reduce the recycling, reduce the waste. And this will be the compost, yeah, the compost bean that I was talking about earlier. Yep, I think that's about it for now. Hope you guys enjoy and hope to see you guys in the bar. Yep. Thank you very much.